about asking him for something. Uh, another question we're going to uh, talk about tonight is what does God have to say about seeking things from him? And lastly, what does God have to say about receiving from him? And uh, so we want you to kind of think about these, think on these. So when it's time to, uh, to uh, answer the question, you'll have some ideas in your mind. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're continuing in this Be Brave series, and we'll continue to stand on Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you everywhere you go. And uh, we want you to stand on that word because God has springs of blessings for you. Amen. Springs of Amen. blessings for you. And we're going to look at tonight, I want you to read in your hearing, Joshua 15, verses 18 through 19. Joshua 15, 18 through 19. Let's read out loud together at the same time on three. Uh, one, two, three. One day she came. Oh, Neil, she urged him to ask her father for you. Solicit, solicit, ask us, seek, and ask us success. success. Uh -huh. We want God, uh, Christians, to know tonight that God, that Christians should ask for what they want from God. <laughs> Christians should ask for what they want from God. Again, that's a good trivia question. Ask us. Uh, is the daughter of Caleb uh -huh. the daughter of Caleb and? Last Sunday, we, we got reintroduced to Caleb as he came on the scenes in Joshua chapter 14. And he reminded uh, Joshua that God had made him and Joshua a promise. Mm -hmm. God had promised uh, Caleb that, that he would get uh, be able to conquer within the land and... Mm -hmm. Forty-five years later, Caleb shows up on the scenes and takes God at his word and says that God owes me this. Right. <laughs> and God owes me this because he promised it to me. And uh, I know it's been about 45 years, but God promised it. And as a result, I come today because I believe that God is a promise keeper and uh, I come today saying, Joshua, I want the land that God said that I could have. All right. And in this text, Joshua chapter 15, we really see the allotment of land and we hear the story about how Caleb does go into the high country and take the land. And those of you who were not here Sunday, we learned that that high country was a place where the giants were and uh, Caleb was not intimidated by the giants in the land. Caleb was not intimidated by the, the giant fortified cities because if you're a giant and you're building something, then naturally your, your, your city is going to be as big as you are or bigger. Hello, sometimes. Right, all right. But Caleb said, I'm not intimidated. I'm going to take God at his word and I'm going to go up to the high country. And yep. suddenly we learned that Caleb, I mean, Joshua, or Caleb was how old? 85. 85 years old saying, give me, God, give me what you said I could have. Give me the high country and I'm going to go up there and I'm going to take on the giants. I'm going to take their giant cities. 
I'm going to take that giant wealth. I'm going to take everything because yeah. God said I could have it. Hello, yeah. something like And in this text tonight, if you read the whole context, you'll see this is an allotment of the land, and this tells us how Caleb did it. Caleb made a promise uh, that to inspire the people in the same way that uh, Saul did when it came to Goliath, that if you take on Goliath, you can have Micah, my daughter, as a prize. Hello, somebody. Well, in this text, Caleb said, you can have Aska, my daughter, if you take on this fortified city where these giants are, you can have my daughter as a prize. Hello, somebody. To be your wife. Hello, somebody. And we have in the text that we see today, Othmeel is the one who went and took, helped to take the land, and he got his daughter. And in this text, we see uh, the springs of blessings. The springs of blessings because we see a, a daughter in her personal relationship with her father. And uh, we see how she leveraged her personal relationship with her father to get even better blessed. Hello, somebody. Right. And we're going to see how uh, she asked her father in this text. We're going to see how she, she, she seeked out her father. We're going to see how she received from her father these springs uh, of blessing. These right. springs right. of blessing. It reminds me of that New Testament text. We're going to look at this little video which tells us uh, the same kind of concept uh, 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 of seeking God, of asking, seeking, and receiving from God. <laughs> Hello, my name is David Dorn, and this is Preposterous, which is not your typical Bible study. But you include in your description of God the word generous. I guess first I need to ask if you believe that God is generous. Jesus in Matthew 7, 7 through 12 tells us of God's extreme generosity for his people. But is that your experience? Let's look at these verses. Ask and you will receive. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. Whoever seeks finds. And everyone who knocks, the door is open. Who among you will give your children a stone when they ask for bread? Or give them a snake when they ask for fish? If you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give good things to those who ask Him? Therefore, you should treat people in the same way that you want people to treat you. This is the law of the prophets. Hopefully these verses grab you. Do you realize what Jesus is saying here? The God of the universe is open and willing to answer your prayers. To give you good things and to bless you. That is the nature of God, according to Jesus, whom I would consider a reliable source. <laughs> now this doesn't make God Santa Claus all jolly and fat with a kid sitting on his knee, willing to fulfill every childhood wish. I want a pony, I want a bicycle, I want a bicycle with a siren, I want a bicycle with no control, I want a baby brother, I want a puppy dog. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's not how it works. Jesus is using father-child language here. And Jesus compares the way we treat our children to the way God treats His. We are capable of horrendous fruits in your life. And have you asked God about it? Another question is, are you willing to work hard to overcome the challenges that you have prayed to God about? And are you willing to fight to triumph over the trials that you're praying about. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're going to talk about that and we pray that God will enable us to have a blessed discussion tonight. Um, we'll continue in this series, Be Brave, Be Brave, which is a study of the book of Joshua. And we've been standing on this word ever since we've been there. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Nah. So the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Tonight, we're going to talk from Joshua 17, 14 through 17, uh, the topic of asking for more, asking for more. 
And let's read this together out loud at the same time. It's three slides up here. It's in your handouts from the NIV. Let's read it on three. One, two, three. The people of Joseph said to Joshua, Why have you given us only one more option and one more choice to turn? We are a numerous people, and the Lord has blessed us abundantly. If you are so numerous, Joshua answered, and if the hill country of Ephraim is too small for you, go up into the forest and clear the land for yourselves there. Clear the land for the Pedrites and the Ripites. The people of Joshua, the hill country is not enough for us, and all the Canaanites who live in the plain have cherished the end of the line, both those in Beth, Shane, and his settlements, and those in the valley of the Zezra. But Joshua said to the tribe of Joseph, and to the Ephraim and the Manassas, your numbers are very powerful. You have not only on one of them, but the forest hill country as well. Clear it, and its furthest limits will be yours. Though the Canaanites have cherished the end of the line, and though they are strong, you can drive them out. Amen. You may be seated in the household of the Lord. We're going to talk about tonight. We're talking about asking for more. We're going to talk about the challenge for more. We're going to talk about the clear of more. And we're going to talk about the conquer of more. And we want Christians to know tonight that Christians should ask God for more when there is a need for more. Amen. Christians should ask God for more when there is a need for more. Tonight we continue in our study in the book of Joshua, in Joshua chapter 17, we're uh, running into a problem. Mm. And it's a problem that, um, and I say that really is a good problem. There are, uh, there are some problems are good problems, and some problems are some bad problems, and, and if I'm going to have a problem, I want to have a good problem. Man. And in the text tonight, uh, we see that there's a good problem. We, we see that there's a tribe that is numerous, and we learned about that tribe this last Sunday. Uh, we learned about Joseph and how God would bless him, and we learned about Manasseh and Ephraim, and we're seeing the, the perpetuation of God's blessings upon their lives because um, they have become too numerous. They were allowed it a certain amount of land, land and they're saying, hey, wait a minute, we got too many folk, we can't fit uh, in this land, Joshua, we got too many folk. God blessed us so much uh, uh, that we've got too much. Hello, somebody. And, and like I said, there's some problems to have, good problems and bad problems. A good problem to have is this kind of problem. Some, some churches run into this uh, problem when revival hits and and, and, and it gets uh, too many folk in here, and, 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 and folk began to lose their seats, uh, their, the seat that they sit on, somebody else is there, and not enough parking. Uh, these are good kind of problems to have. Hello, son. Right, uh, right. There are all other kind of problems that churches have, and, and, uh, and it has to do with bad problems when people can't get along. Uh, uh, they don't want to grow. They, they don't want to share the love. They want to sit on the love. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and, and, and those are bad problems. But in the text, I think this is a good problem to have. All right. yeah. and, 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 and I think that this was a good solution as well as we're going to learn tonight. But they had to ask Joshua for more. They had to ask the man of God for more. And this is where we are in the text uh, tonight. But before we get into the text, I pose the question. What, what are some of the challenges in your life? Anybody want to share some of the challenges that you're facing in your life? Some of you already have. Some of you said the challenge is... Uh, uh, they got spring fever and they want to, <laughs> they're acting crazy <laughs> because spring break is coming up. Some of you have already shared the problem. Uh, uh, you know, at work, you know, it's just a, a hard time. Or some of you already shared sickness in your body. Mm -hmm. That, 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 whatever that flu strain is going around, it's taking a whole lot of folk out. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody. 
and, and, and those are challenges uh, that, that, that we may have. Is there any other challenges that were not mentioned tonight? Pastor Tom, I have a challenge that I've been wrestling with for probably about, about two years, I think. Mm -hmm. A year and a half at least. Mm -hmm. Is being obedient and doing what God has called me to do. Mm -hmm. That's a challenge for me. Mm -hmm. And I've been struggling with it, and, and I ain't been doing nothing but going in circles. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about going around in circles. You know? Yes, sir. And, and, and it's just, it's, it's been pretty, pretty hard for me. Amen. I just need the church to pray for me. Amen. That's, 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 that's thank for your transparency. You, you have an issue. You know what God mm -hmm. wants you to do, but you're not doing it. Right. Hello, somebody. Yes, just being a little disobedient. Did you want to be specific about that? Yes, yeah, you, you asked God about it? Be, be more specific, specific. Being disobedient. Well, I mean, he called me to preach, and I ain't doing it. Uh -oh. Ouch. Okay. What you say? You just run it right yeah. now. You're preaching, you ain't doing it. Amen. Amen. Well, I mean, it's a classic runner. And, and, and you know. many uh, of us, uh, mm. before we submitted to our call, had that issue. Yeah. We were runners. Uh, yeah. Everybody has <laughs> gone through it. And they say about a runner, when he finally do, gives up. You better watch out. <laughs> so we want to encourage you because uh, uh, it's not something that you take lightly. You get it too lightly. And, and that's why we're not in a rush. You have right. to have your mind made up <clears throat> and you have to be ready. So uh, uh, anybody else have any challenges they may be facing? And the question then is, is have you asked God about it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not telling you. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, trying to go on and you know, preach and uh, I'm you know, trying to wait till I get stitches out one eye yeah. and I got surgery on the other eye and uh, got to get my shoulder fixed and the rotator cut. So I think I'm going to get those kind of under my belt. I'll be uh, better to go. <laughs> You know, so that's uh, what I'm praying about, hoping for. God already done some things for me. Uh, uh, these are just the next things in line that we hopefully uh, can uh, get done uh, quickly and, and uh, right away. So I'm definitely praying about that so we can continue to do what the Lord has called us to do. And it does uh, it does slow you down, getting to the point. Now, if I don't see none of y'all, y'all see me, y'all wave. I ain't being funny if I don't wave. <laughs> even if I don't even walk by you because you got to call my name or say something. Yeah. Cause I, I, I certainly uh, won't know who you are. So mm -hmm. I've heard that a couple times. Sure. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's that's a challenge. Uh, and, I, and, and you carry that, Reb. I mean, if, if you are a great witness to that, because I think folks don't really realize. Sometimes they hear you, but they don't. Uh, but when you are losing your sight, uh, you have ups and you remember. So remember. <laughs> See him out of your voice. Shout out, man. <laughs> hey, let him hear this word. Say, man, pray for him. Pay the cup, man. Contain the gifts. Say, man, you're okay. Be ready. Everything. Yeah, man. Yeah. Get you. Yeah. yeah. We'll call you, man. man. 2.0, man. We finished. Yeah. Girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you 1.5 right now, Rio. Anyway, you done got you done got some things fixed. You 1.5, so yes, sir. 1.5. Any other challenge? I think it's just a challenge for you every day. Just to line up and be Life itself is a challenge. I mean, yeah. you're short of money or short of this, and your body gives out on you, and you're just like, going, oh, Lord, you know? I don't feel like moving today, you know? Uh, I have a metabolism problem, and it just, I have to literally make myself, you know, get up and do something. That's hard. I mean, it is. A lot of people doesn't understand that. But along with the other problems that I have, and then this come up, it's just like, yeah. You just want to give up, mm -hmm. you know. You just want to give up, and mm -hmm. you just ask the question, "Why? Mm -hmm. Why, hey, Lord? Mm -hmm. Why?" Yeah. You know. And then the RA, and then it just it makes it continually. It's just mm -hmm. like you know, the body is just giving out, mm -hmm. and, and I just won't let it. You know, I can't yeah. just sit. I can't just because then I'll just stay there. So mm -hmm. to be life 
It is a challenge. Yes, yes. You know, it just is a challenge because you worry about your grandkids and your kids, or you're worried about financial, or worrying about if your car is going to stay in good shape long enough for you to get enough, <laughs> or you know, just things like that. You know, so life and right now, I think it just keeps getting harder. You know, I think it's just the signs of the times that we live in, which is very difficult. You know, and it's scary to me. It's scary. You know, because you can just look out in the world and the signs are there. You just gotta, you just gotta know what the signs are. I mean, it's coming. I mean, it's coming. We're living in the last days. You can see it every time you open the newspaper or turn on the radio or something. There's always something. You know, always. It's just, you know, so so I'm. I asked that question with some folks. I said, has it always been this bad? Uh, no, I have I just grown up? Yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and that, that. You know, when you're young, sometimes you it's don't realize magnetized. what's going on around you. Has it always been this bad? No, it's been bad in certain areas. You know, yeah. we've always had war. Mm -hmm. The type of wars we're here, having now are domestic wars. You know, basically the terrorists on our soil. You yeah, know, right. just like the bombing today. We don't know what happened. In New York, New York, if y'all don't know about New York, uh, right. building blew up in New York and really? killed some people. In Harlem, yeah. Yeah, oh, just yeah, like yeah. it reminded them of 9 11, building blew up in Brooklyn, New York. We have family there, you know, we've been checking on them, so, uh, um, you know, uh, yeah. Russia, you know, Russia done reared its face again, you know. Uh, and then, you know, we got an airliner, uh, uh, a mess, just disappeared, you know. You know, so I think, you know, that question, I think it's getting worse. We've had these things, but it's, we're getting more and more and more. You know, we don't have any relief in between. But it's, you know, it's scripture. You read Revelation. It's scripture. We're living. You can just follow it. It's scripture. You know, I my sister was sitting and talking about it. And, me, and it scares me to death to go in as far as some parts of Revelation. I hate to say that, but it does. It just scares me. And it always has since I was a kid. You know, you just think of doom and gloom. Yeah. And I think it's just the signs of the times that we're living in. And I think life is, to me, is getting harder. I, I just mm -hmm. think it's getting harder to survive. And I remember when my parent, when I was little, and my parents would talk and people would talk about everything. You know, they would talk about different things. And I remember my mom and daddy said, "You know, you're going to see us." A, a time where families have to take care of families, or yeah. people have to take care of people in order to eat and in order to survive. Amen. You know? But there are challenges in life. There are challenges in life, and and we want you to know that when when the challenges come, and anything that you are you're dealing with, you know, you ask God about it, yeah. pray about it. You know, yeah, yeah. don't take it on. You know, because. You're dealing with enough in and of yourself, but when you start taking on what's going on all around the world, that's another thing I think that is, uh, is more prevalent than it used to be, is that you, uh, you supporting the news happening, so you, and you, you didn't know what was here about what was going around and around you, China. Or you just, going on, uh, yeah, as it was something. <laughs> yeah. It was too late. I remember being and all that. Report, you know, <laughs> there. You know, the way to yeah. report now, I mean, the instant, yeah. in the instant yeah. you hear about breaking it, news. because it's just, yeah, breaking. it's just breaking. It's a new, the yeah. news cycle. Yeah. They say that the news yeah. cycle never stops. Yeah. It used to be so, you so get the news quick. at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Now you got, you get news every, 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 every <laughs> all day, every day, you know, we got, and, and it's all bad news, hello somebody, <laughs> but, but let's look at the challenges in the text and see how they handled it, okay, uh, the text says that the people of, of, of Joseph said to Joshua, why, have you given your, uh, us only one allotment and one portion of our, of an inheritance, it says that we are a numerous people, and God had, has blessed us. So the way they dealt with their challenge is that they had to go to Joshua, who was the man of God. Uh, the way we deal with our challenges is we have to take it to God himself. Amen. And whatever challenge we're facing, whether it's a good challenge or it's a bad challenge, uh, we take it to the Lord in prayer. Mm -hmm. In prayer. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is what they did, and they would have never come up with a solution had they not uh, asked for a solution. And we talked about this last uh, last uh, Wednesday night, and we, we, we looked at Matthew 
7, 7, where it tells us to, 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 to ask, you know, to talk to the Lord, to ask Him about uh, things and to pray. And uh, in 2 Samuel here is, is one of the saddest texts, I think, I think that is on Scripture in my own estimation. You say, why do you think it's one of the saddest things? Well, Sorry. after David got in trouble, and uh, the man of God confronted David. These are the words that God has for him. He said, I, I gave your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms. I, I gave you all Israel and Judah. And if all this had been too little, I would have given you even more. Amen. Hello, somebody. <laughs> So, so if you just ask, you got to learn to ask the Lord yeah. <laughs> for what you want and what you need. Well. Hello, somebody. In the text, they, they ask for what they needed. It, it seems pretty simple, but a lot of times we, we don't pray. Basically, this is prayer. <laughs> we don't pray. We don't yeah. depend upon the Lord. We don't tap into the power of God. Uh, uh, we need to ask the God for what we need. That, and that's what they said. <laughs> They came and they went. They said, hey, this is, uh, we are, we too, uh, we too blessed. Some numerous. We need one more space. That's, now, I always like to be ready, folks. Now, when you're right. out for something, I said, might need to ask for the answer. Might not be the, uh, that you want. And, and, and we don't, we don't have to uh, and learn that and, and, and we don't have to, oh, we, we ask her and we don't have to wear that time. It's going to give us a weird or a snake. God, we don't have that God give us what's thrown it for us. Okay, he's going and uh, good video is a, a pre emphasis. This look, they say it's uh, the, the, the space issue I'm going to look at uh, in this next point. Pause and prayer for everyone, everywhere. With one heart, many prayers at the same time. How many guys say it was to seek the change of trusting him to enlarge our tents in the right hand direction? Strengthening the core, strengthening the states, not holding back. I, for what is still to come, let us seek the Lord together. And this is a prayer emphasis. This, that's based on the text that we're going to look at a little later about enlarging in our territory. Um, and that's what they did in the text. And, and, and the answer that they got, they would have to be willing to work hard to overcome the challenges that they had prayed for. And the question is, at night, are you willing to work hard to overcome the challenges that you pray to God? Just like simple. It has to do with my health. I'm praying that the Lord would bless my body. Yes, sir. I pray that. But I got to do something. <laughs> I just pray, but I got to make some, take some practical steps, which is number one, I'm supposed to eat right, like the doctor said, and I'm supposed to exercise. I'm not as young as I used to be. And I've been growling about that, because when I was young, my metabolism was around, I could eat anything, and didn't, <laughs> I didn't have to worry about high blood pressure and all of that. But now I got to watch what I eat and I got to get some exercise. I, this is what I have to do. I pray about it. I, I take the practical steps that's needed to get the answer to the prayer. But that's what Christians mess up a lot of times. They pray about it, but they don't do nothing about it. Right, right, right. Hello, somebody. Yeah, we pray that the Lord would bless us, but what you going to do about it? You paying your tithes? Okay, that's good. But what else you going to do? Are you going to... Uh, uh, be an exemplary party at work to where they bless you so? Or are you going to do what most people in order to become millionaires, they they have their own businesses. Hello, somebody. We want to be a millionaire. We don't want to own our own. Hello, somebody. 
and, and people who own, they're not giving it away. Remember back in the day, we used to ask for what? Have to ask for what? A raise because what? Because they're just not going to just give it to you. Got to ask for it. <coughs> Hello, somebody. But whatever it is, the challenges that we face, we've got to take the practical steps to get the answers that we need. And, and this is what Joshua told them. He said, okay, if uh, you are, are, are so numerous, Joshua uh, answered, and if the hills of the country of Ephraim is too small for you, what did he say go and do? Go up and into the forest and what? Clear the land for yourselves there. Uh-huh. Hello, somebody. He said, you, you, you got what you want, but you got to work for it. <laughs> you got to clean up the mess. You got to clean up the mess. You, 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 I, I, say, I, 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 I can bless you, but you got work to do. You got to clear some stuff out. Right, yeah. Hello, somebody. You want good help? You go clear that refrigerator out of that bad food. Hello, somebody. You you, you want to be blessed in your finances? First of all, you give to God, and then you start, uh, instead of giving your money away, invest your money and think about ways that you can uh, become a better business person. Hello, somebody. Uh, There's work to do. There's work to do. Uh, When asking for more, it really means that you really, you, you have to work for more. Tell yeah. somebody. Yeah. Um, Isaiah uh, 54, 2. Uh, one of, one of, uh, yeah. I preached on this text uh, back in 2012. Uh, Title uh, Stretching Path to Your Destiny. From that, I think back to my first but I, I preached this text. And be a B, and this even got text. Isaiah 44. What this says. They are first to put your tent to. The Lord place up your tent, curve it out, do your whole back, lengthen your the cause, should not be your state. Mm-hmm. This is basically what you have to do. They have to go up and then this, they will cut this side and put it as far as it was, uh, and, and they will have to clear up the land. Now, one of the reasons they didn't want to do that was because I don't know if anybody know who these folks were. <coughs> Uh, the Rephites. Hello, giants. Giant. Yeah, there were giants in yeah. the land. Yeah. 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 So, in order to be blessed the way they wanted to be blessed, there was giants <laughs> in the land. And, and not only that, we hear about what they had. They had these chariots of iron. Yeah. 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 So which meant in order for them to be blessed the way they had to be blessed, they were going to have to step out on the promises of God mm-hmm. and go out and clean not just the fire itself. They're going to take the giants out mm-hmm. and take them folk out who had the iron chariots. They would have to realize that God was on their side. You're asking for more, but mm-hmm. well, you're really asking for more work to do. <coughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what happened to me. Somebody. And, and are you willing to work? I, I come to the conclusion ain't nobody gonna outwork me. They may be smarter than me. Hello, somebody. <laughs> but, but you ain't gonna outwork me. Hello, somebody. I, I I can do the work, Lord. Just let me do the work. Hello, somebody. And then God will bless me. Right, right, right. And, and, and if you want to be blessed and you want to ask God for more, you, you're asking for more work. Yes, sir. Hello, somebody. Asking for more work <laughs> if you want to be blessed. Man, that's, man. That's, that's, that's that's you gotta got work. That's, that's amazing. You gotta got got work harder. You gotta work harder. Work. You can work yeah. harder yeah. and smarter. Yes, sir. And God yes, sir. is on your side. Yes, and then yes. in order for them to do this, they would have to remember yes, that God it's was on their side. That the only way they could do it would be by faith. Right. Amen. The only way they could do it was to be by faith. Because they would have to step out upon the promises of God. Asking for more. So you still want to ask for more? You better watch out. Because you might not like the answer. <laughs> Lastly, are you ready to fight hard to triumph over your pain trials? You are praying to God. What do you say about tonight? Go ahead. 
easier. Right. And I think getting easier. Right. And not giving me a Christian for this uh, time. And, and I tell you, this ain't just all the back. Uh, all the you be that. The best. Right. Don't just, just, devil ain't gonna be that. No. <laughs> They compromise. Give you hello something. Let you put somebody on you decides. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so so in other words, if you're gonna be blessed, you're gonna have to pay for it. Whatever it is in your health and your wealth. Yeah, right. Hello somebody. If you wanna ask for more, that means you gotta work for more, and then it means you gotta believe for more. Amen. It means you're gonna have to fight. That's why Paul always talks about do the work. And, and, and the faith. Can anybody tell how Paul described the faith at the end of his life? What did he do? He said, I fought a good fight. Say, I fought a good fight. Hello, somebody. He, he, he didn't say he was in a fight like with Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson would come out and knock somebody out in 30 seconds. No, 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 no. no. It, this was a good fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good fight. It, it went all oh, around. Yeah, yeah. Hello, somebody. He had me down sometime and I had, but I fought the good fight. Yeah, good fight. Hello, somebody. Yeah, what else did he do? Kept he kept the faith. kept the faith. That's what Christian folk in our day and times with so many challenges that we are facing. <laughs> many times they don't keep the faith. They give up. Right. And walk away from the faith. Wow. wow. Come on. <laughs> you walk away from God himself. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Because things ain't going your way because you, you ain't been but because you're not willing to work harder. Because you want something given to you. Mm. I hear we raised a generation of, of young folk that will just want stuff given to them. Come on. Yes, Lord. Right. Yeah. Hello, somebody. And, 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 and listen to what I said. I said, we what? raised. We Hello, raised. somebody. Because yeah. <laughs> some of us weren't raised that way. Hello, Come somebody. On. We, we always had to work for what we got. Come Hello, on. somebody. Because if you come from nothing, the only way you're going to get something is what? You're going to have to work for it. Work for it. Well, nobody giving nothing out. <laughs> Hello, somebody. You got to work. You have to work. So, so, so you got to be willing in the spiritual realm to, to add that same tenacity that you have from going up and, and having nothing. And, and, and you got to... Uh, allow your kids to work for stuff. Stop giving them everything. Man, man. You know somebody? It, they ain't gonna have no survival skills if you give them everything. You gotta let them work now. Oh, at me. That's what my mama did for me. I, oh, when they didn't give me. I had a car. I was a teenager. I worked for when that car. I'll get somebody. And when they all went down, they ain't get what happened. It was on your feet. Down. It was in your feet. I put my feet on your feet. Catching the bus. Catching the bus. And go and find me a job. Hello, somebody. Sometimes I had to walk. Oh, couldn't afford to catch the bus. And I had to use my own two feet uh, and walk to the job. Hello, somebody. Some places ain't got no bus. Hello. Got the fight for it. Don't give up in your spiritual walk and in this life. Ain't nothing going to be given to you. Come on. Nice. Not unless your, your last name is Trump. <laughs> we got any Trumps in the house? <laughs> you got to be willing to fight for it. <laughs> this last uh, text, this is what it said, comfortable, comfortable. He said, okay, uh, there was a challenge for more. And then he said, okay, I gave you, you asked for it. And I'm giving you the answer. Okay. <clears throat> you go out and clear that land of the forest, of the giants, and of the chariots. Go out and clear that land. Hello, somebody. Yeah. And then we come to, to, the, to the conquest of more. But uh, uh, the forest hills uh, country as well. And clear it. And its furthest limits will be yours. Uh, though the Canaanites have what? Chariots split with iron. Split with iron. And, iron and, and though and they're, they're strong, strong, you can drive them out. Drive them out. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Hello. Can you imagine what a chariot looks like for a giant? Oh, man. <laughs> 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 it's, some, it's, some, it's, some, it's some big stuff going on there. <laughs> 
If you said you wanted more, okay, you can have more, go get more. Go get it. Hello, somebody. I, I know that there's a challenge there. I, I know that the, the giants are there. I know that they, they have chariots fitted with iron. And I know that they are strong, but it says what? You can drive them out. But you can drive them out. Man. Hello, wow. somebody. Well, somebody he said, whatever challenge that you can face, you can drive it out of your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you do the right thing, whether it's financially, whether it's physically, you drive it out of your life. As a matter of fact, God was preparing them for this day. If they had did a little Bible study and looked at Deuteronomy 20 and 1, uh, it says what? When you go to war against what? Enemies. And see, see what? Horses and chariots. And, and what? Army greater than, than yours. Do what? not be afraid. Because <laughs> the Lord your God, who brought you up out of Egypt, will be with you. That's, that's a faith that's issue right there. That's a, yeah, that becomes a faith issue. Mm -hmm. God said, don't be intimidated by the challenges in your life. I knew you were going to be facing these challenges, and as a result, I said right now, and I said back then, that you could have the victory. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So all you've got to do is go out and conquer more. Amen. 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 You go out and conquer more. Yeah, but you are more than a conqueror, regardless wow. of what you're facing, <laughs> whether it's your health, oh, whether it's your wealth, whether it's your marriage, whether it's uh, whatever your challenges are, yeah, God yeah. says you can yeah. conquer more. Yeah. Tell somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Tell somebody. Yeah. You can conquer more. <laughs> you can do more. Yes, he said, uh, don't be intimidated by what you see. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Didn't we say there was so much going on in this world? Uh -huh. yeah. Pains disappearing, bombings, hello somebody, sickness, hello somebody. He said, don't be intimidated by what you see. <laughs> you, 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 you see, that what you see, don't, don't be intimidated by what you see. Come on, man. Amen, say it, say it. Don't, don't, don't allow, even if this is the end days, Christians shouldn't be intimidated by the end days, especially if it's the Lord bringing the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Hello, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out of I said it. something. Yes, sir. <laughs> If it, it is the end days and everything, well, that means the Lord is coming. Hello, yes, somebody. That's something that we as Christians look forward to. Hello, somebody. We, we look forward to hearing that, 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 that Gabriel blow his horn. Hello, somebody. The dead in Christ rise first, and those who remain alive will be caught up in an instant. Oh, and we'll be together with him forever. Hello, somebody. Don't, don't be intimidated by your times and what you see. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Amen. Hello, somebody. That plane disappeared to man, but God knows where it is. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Ain't no shocker. Ain't no, ain't no shocker. We, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be fearful. Man, man. Hello, somebody. Of all the challenges that we need, we don't have to be afraid. Man, man. God is with us. Man. Thank you. Hello, somebody. Yeah, that's good news. Man. I believe we call him Emmanuel. Yeah. What does Emmanuel mean? God, God, is, God is with us. Yes, sir. So don't be intimidated by what you see. Thank you, God. What's going on at work? <laughs> what's going on in your marriage? What's going on in your body? Man. You may be sick. Or you just rest and say, well, I'm going to rest in the Lord until yeah, I get yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hello, somebody. You may have a self-imposed sickness. Hello, somebody. I'm going to have to put them, um, them, them that, that, that fried chicken away. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I was eating away. I can, I can get healed. I, I can get better. I ain't got to be intimidated. Hello, somebody. Asking for more. When you ask for more, I not like the answer that you get. But you can still conquer Amen. 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 Are there any questions, comments, or concerns before we enter into our time of prayer? Amen.
Sister Ledette, when we pray, Pastor Tom. A special prayer for our Sister Ledette.